Thank you. Good evening. Uh, it is Monday afternoon, a little after six, and uh, I've had a, a pretty good day, I guess. I, I have nothing to complain about. Uh, I have learned that if I kind of take a breath and kind of sit down in the mornings when I get up and set my feet on the ground flat and just just kind of absorb who I am and what I'm doing and stress a little bit, it just, the day just goes better. So uh, get up and say a little prayer and uh, kind of got on with it this morning. So on that note, uh, hasn't been a bad day at all. I hope your day has gone well. Uh, as usual, we'll start with questions. See if we have any any, any questions or, or comments. Uh, I want to look at something again in chapter 11 of Luke. So, and Pastor may or may not join us today tonight. Okay. Any, any questions or comments? Okay. I saw something. Uh, I wanted to, to look at verses 37 through 40, 41. Uh, but I saw something in 36 I want to talk about that really kind of sets up verse 39, and I hope you guys uh, have some have some dialogue here. Tell me what you see. Verse 36, Ron, we've already talked about. Ron, this oh. is from Before you start, would you repeat the chapter and verse again? Yeah, we are looking at uh, the, the verses that we talked about Saturday and Sunday, uh, chapter 11 of Luke. And I, I wanted to talk about verses 37 through 41, but I'm going to start with verse 36. Okay. 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 It says, if therefore your whole body is full of light with no dark part in it, it shall be wholly illumined as when the lamp illumines, illuminates you from from its ray, you with its rays. Uh, something that kind of stood out to me. I I, I picture uh, I picture someone who's getting ready to go to a function, and they stand in front of a, a mirror. They they've got you got your new dress or a new suit or whatever, and you're going to this this grand function and you you have your shoes, you have your tie to match, and and uh, all your all your stuff is it's it's on, it's pressed, and you're looking good, and you decide whether or not I want to do it. This pair of shoes or that pair of shoes, whether I wear that tie, this tie, your hair is tight, you're looking good, and you take inventory of yourself from head to toe, and you walk out because you know with a confidence and an assurance that I look good and we've all been there all uh, but what about the internal part it says your whole body is full of light with no darkness in it shall and, and it shall be holy a little bit holy word holy means complete it means to be whole it means complete so it's talking about taking an inventory that same type of inventory on the inside Looking at uh, who I am, and this isn't for anybody to see. This is a personal kind of thing uh, that you look to see how you look on the inside. Am I just as sharp on the inside? Is everything tailored on the inside? Is everything uh, uh, matching? Am I? Is, is everything on point? Are all of my parts lined up? For the same purpose, uh, that 
we 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 talked about that the other day, but that kind of stood out to me, uh, b- because the whole thing of this is you are the one lighting the lamp. The lighting of the lamp is when we turn to see what was true. We turn to see uh, what what uh, uh, what the the the, the the other part of what we were hearing, there had to be more. So what was the more? What was the true part? What was the part that we did not see? And that turn has taken all of us on a journey. So we're at a point now where when we, uh, 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 as we discussed on yesterday, uh, talk about the knowing and the knowing is an intimate thing because it means that I have coupled myself with the thing that I am pursuing, the thing that I am chasing. So if I am chasing truth, I have coupled myself with that. Well, that, that pursuit has become who I am. And uh, it has purposed me for this time to, to, take that stock of who I am, that inventory, that constant look internally. And it is that look that helps me have the discernment that you're going to see that Jesus has here in a minute. Because that look uh, uh, is is what brings every possible piece of clarity to you. So that clarity is what allows you to, to see and discern things that may not be uh, may not be 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 true or not. So, in, in, any questions or comments on that? Questions or comments? Ron, I have a question. Just okay. a few ago, you said um, the light is means the truth, right? Yes. Okay. So as we're growing in awareness and understanding, that truth continues to grow too, right? Correct. Because yes, what ma'am. we make think is truth at first until we have more understanding that is the truth at that moment but not as I guess what I'm saying is as we grow that truth and awareness grows too yes uh, uh, that was uh, that's part of the, the, the challenge that we were speaking of as well uh, it, it took it took uh, quite a while for me to to mesh with to become one with the idea of being Elohim. Although the scriptures say that, and it took a while because the things that are in me that I thought were true all needed to be uprooted, all need to be challenged. And though it was being challenged, uh, I had a hard time letting it go. So as we let these things go and as we uh, embrace who we are and, and talk about them over and over again until they, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I want to say overtake us, but, but until we submit to them or become one with them, yeah, it is something that we wrestle with. But it, it is a process. It is a transformation. And, and I like uh, I really like the, the term of coupling or becoming one or having intercourse with. We're at a point now where I, I look at it as having intercourse with truth. In other words, there is no there is no part of me, I, I and, and that, that probably isn't quite true, but there is no part of me that I'm aware of that I, I readily see that pushes back, that I, I am more accepting now <clears throat> than I have ever been. And I am more comfortable now with who I am than I I have ever been. So that's, that's what I mean. Uh, And, and, and uh, 
that is a, 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 a journey that we will continue to be on and as long as we're in the earth. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. Anything else, can anyone else answer that in a different way or a better way, maybe? No, but I was ready to tell you, explain a little more about the intercourse with truth. Well, it, it, I, I use the word intercourse because intercourse is a coupling of, of two things becoming one. Uh, and it is an act of submission. It is an, an act of desire. It is uh, an act of, of love and compassion. So uh, we've moved to a place of understanding to we, I, I, we readily accept who we are. And the, the word, the truth that, that we're seeing, even when we don't open the book and talk about other things, we are more comfortable with who we are, which opens us up to see more. As these verses, the one thing that sticks out in this verse is the more that you share, the more that, that you, you, you talk about this, the more that you see and the more that you share of it, the more you will see the more you will be uh, become true. In other words, all of this has value. When a question is asked, it has value because it brings about clarity. Uh, when someone else has a comment to make or, or somebody else says, you know, why you were talking, I saw this. All of those things are part of shedding the light, and all of it brings value to uh, all to illuminate you, to see you, let, so you can not only uh, uh, see what is true, but you see who you are and how truth is, 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 is moving in you. So that's the intercourse that I speak of. The more like a hunger and a desire. Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? Hey, Ron. Yes, on this life, on this life journey, who sparks the light and who infused the light? Say that again. That who who sparks the light? Yeah, and who infused the light in you to? Uh, it's hard to put in words of what I'm trying to say. I, I, um, I think. Go ahead. I I think Charles, uh, that is what we're doing now, and I think it is an individual thing. Uh, it, it is a it is something inside of you that makes you turn. It is something inside of you that, that recognizes that uh, there's a yearning in you that, that is seeking more, seeking enlightenment. So mm -hmm. I, I, I would say it's an individual thing. And then we we come together and, and we open up the, the scriptures and we, we discuss things and, and help each other to see. But it has to be, be you as an individual who desires this. Right, because when you see the truth, the truth opens you up to that light. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, have, Ron. Yeah. Sorry, this is Audrey. Hey, Audrey. I agree with you. Um, we know the source of the light, but... But the way the light is infused in us is, is up to us because um, the, the, the spirit can prick our consciousness, but we have to take the step forward or we have to do the seeking to, to really find the light. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 is, it is indeed a journey, and that's what I like about that verse 
the start of verse 33, no one after lighting a lamp. So it it is in it is uh, each and every one of us our responsibility rather to to light that lamp. It is our responsibility to take that first step and, and start this journey. So, uh, and the, the the beauty of it is, uh, we have not accidentally, but God has put a group of us together to help each other along the way. So that to me is this, that to me makes this extremely special. And, and, and uh, it, it has on uh, more than one occasion helped to, uh, to listen or even have somebody to talk to in, in tight situations. But it's a journey that each of us has to start. And the tight situations is a part of it. That's all a part of it. So. Questions or comments, y'all? I'm trying to get my comment together, but I'm trying to speak it. I word it in a way. Uh, and I think we had talked about this once before on on the, mm-hmm. uh, the line or uh, in class when we were um, when you see people they are hurting and they are seeking truth but they're not getting truth and it's like they are in total darkness but because they've heard uh, they've heard and re- and and they receive what they heard. And you see no growth, you see no change, and it and it hurts you because you know that you're in a position. And I'm not saying you. I mean, you know what I'm saying me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See the hurt in the people, and you see the hunger, and then it's once like uh, you see maybe one or two people, and they they're searching and they're seeking and and they're looking for truth. And now that they they are being enlightened on things, it's like they just can't get enough. Uh, they they want more, and and they're not getting it in the settings in the in some bodies of Christ. They're not getting it, and they are really hurting. And it's like they're spiritually dying. You see, it's like you see the darkness there, and and your heart goes out to those people because you know that. The, the leaders are not really teaching truth. They're, they're more concerned about people not coming because of COVID. They're staying at home. Or the people not sending their tithe and their offering to the church because of COVID. Uh, the children not coming because of COVID. Parents won't make the children come. So the focus is on everything else except seeking truth. I believe that if you give them truth, you know, and let them see the, see the, the light, that there is light, there's a change that can take place, that things will get better, you know, but they don't see that. And and because you see people sitting there and they're satisfied, they've gotten to a point to where they're satisfied with just what they're eating, and it's like they have no desire to change. Some do, some don't. They don't have no desire because they don't know truth, you know, they don't know the truth from something false. So they just go along to get along, to keep people from being angry at them because they don't want to leave. They don't want to go to another church because they feel like if they go to the other church, they're running into the same thing. So the, the it's like, to me, the only light that's being shared abroad to some a some few that comes on Sunday morning to Sunday school. The Sunday school teachers are, are sharing more light with the, with the one few that come than the leaders are. And that's sad. And some of them will just come to Sunday school, church school, and they'll go right back home because they don't want to hear what's being said from the pulpit. And that's sad. I'm finished. I, I agree with you, Kathy. Um, there, there's, a, there's, there's, there's something, though, that w- what you're saying is we all the hope. And and again, I don't mean that uh, arrogantly or 
to be conceded. Uh, if you think about how long we've been on this journey, we hadn't been here long. I mean, we, I mean, the people on the phone, whether you're looking at Foundation of Faith or, or Greater New Faith, you say, well, we've been, the church started at X amount of years ago. Well, that, that in the larger scheme of things, because we're talking about the entire earth. We're talking about uh, the existence of man since the beginning of time. So that's the hope that I have in me. Uh, so, and, and as we move farther in the journey, you will become more sensitive to the needs and hurts of other people. And we look at, we talk about uh, the, the arrogance sometimes of, of people, the hatred, the killing, uh, the, the, the black on black crime, the, 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 the wickedness of the police. We talk about all those things. And to me, uh, the same desire that I have for one group, I have to have for all. So the, the, the sensitivity that you're discussing is, is so real, but that is to me why it is so imperative that we continue on the journey that we're on. Because as as we've we've stated a number of times, and and I think this lesson in Luke kind of reiterates that looking at what's inside of us, looking at us ourselves individually, uh, and 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 moving uh, to to be a better version of myself is what changes not only me but it changes the world because. What the same air that you breathe and I breathe, we're putting this out in the universe. So yeah, we are very sensitive to it. Uh, you, you know, you know, sensitivity. Uh, you 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 look at things, especially uh, when it, it it involves somebody in our family, and I mean our family, the people on this phone whether it be uh, 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 an, an illness or a sickness or something happens to somebody. And just like for, you know, those of you who don't know, Pastor's mom transitioned yesterday. And I almost didn't say anything because I figured, you know what, that's not my news to tell. But I, I hope he doesn't mind me sharing that. So my heart goes out there to him and his family. Uh, but as he said to me, you guys carry on. I might not be there tonight. I may not be there. And, and, and so, uh, I, you know, you, 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 you pray for him and his family, but you, you also know that the direction we're moving in and what we're doing is a lot more than we realize. A lot more. So I, I, I do understand your pain. Uh, you, you know what? That same pain you, you feel every time you cut the television on because you've become sensitive to the needs and the hurts and the pains of other people, and you can't help but see it. So I hope that answers a little bit. I hope it helps uh, anybody else that, that may have uh, another, another thought on that, please. Uh, Ron, this is Shirley. Yeah, I understand that. Like you said, the pain that we feel for others. Uh, I, you know, I work in a doctor's office and I'm a cancer, uh, in a cancer doctor's office. So I see a lot of hurt and a lot of people go pretty fast sometimes. And I, I don't understand what you're saying because it's just like me and a lady was talking today. This guy got, uh, he had lung cancer, and I don't think he lasts two months before he passed away. And and it was like in a month's time, he had brain it. So, I, you know, it seemed like I felt those people's pain. And, and we get close to people that we work around and those that come in the hospital being sick. Yeah. Great I'm example. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Great example. Uh, I don't think we can talk enough about the importance and the role of the human. 
uh, recognizing that you are human, recognizing that everybody is a part of you and you are a part of everybody. Recognizing that 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 you are the conduit in the earth that links all the 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 the, the rest of mankind to the spirit world. You are the prayer. You are the light. You are the the, the portion of man that the scripture speaks of that uh, moves beyond time. So. You are, being that uh, is another way of saying that we are conduit. That not only do you you draw in questions, you draw in pain. You you are the light as well, and 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 uh, that is the importance of the recognition of being Elohim because it doesn't have to stay there. It doesn't have to stay there that, that we become war is me. What am I to do with all this? It helps us to see. It helps us to be peace. So, I feel like I'm talking a lot. I hope I hope this making sense. Uh, if, if there's anybody else that can add to this, uh, I'd appreciate it because I, I, I think this is a it, we are an important pa- part of this place here. You making sense? Yeah, you making sense, Ron? Because we are the light bearers. Yeah. Man. So, so don't don't let let us not be in despair when when we feel pain or when we feel that that is all that is a part of this as well. Unfortunately. I hope verse 36 makes sense. I think verse 36 helps me, help me in a way to understand verse 39. I'm going to read a little further and uh, see where we're all okay. And when he has spoken, uh, a Pharisee asked him to have lunch with him, and he went in and reclined at the table. And when the Pharisee saw that he saw it, he was surprised that he had not first ceremonially washed before he before the meal. But the Lord said to him, "Now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but inside of you, you are full of robbery and wickedness. You foolish ones." Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? Okay. Uh, this to me is a continuation of what we've we've already studied, and it shows the importance of recognizing and submitting to to who you are. Uh, the lighting of the lamp to me is uh, is one of those indication indicators that you are you are fully in, you have bought into this, you have started a journey that you are fully in and you're not backing out of it. This is, you have seen something and it is causing you to go all in. It's causing you to move forward at any cost. So uh, in, in this, from this point, what you're going to see here is the battle between truth and religion. Now, a couple of things here. Uh, the ceremony, sort ceremonial clean, cleansing or washing. Uh, if, if we go back to Deuteronomy and Leviticus, it speaks of that. Uh, you 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 washed your hands. Uh, you know, before and after meals. There, there's certain things, and all of this was law, part of the law. Uh, you you were constantly cleansing yourself, especially you know certain parts of the day, but before prayer, before meals, that sort of thing, before entering certain places, there there were different cleansings. Uh, there were washing basins uh, inside the temple before you went through different gates. So this was a very important part of their religion. Uh, 
so when he when he says this, but the, the important thing that I see here in this is how did Jesus know this? He does not say a word to Jesus about him not ceremony uh, about him not bathing. He doesn't say anything, but Jesus discerns this. How does that happen? What what takes place here? Uh, it, it goes back to what we studied in, in 33 through 36. Uh, that illumination, that light, if I can see what is inside of me, if I take stock of what is inside of me, and I'm, I am fully illumined, is that I recognize that I am complete. I recognize that 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 I am holy, and and and, and remember, part of that is, is is setting aside space. I'm I'm setting aside uh, what I uh, know the universe will give me. I don't know what is needed at any time, but I am open to it. Have you not ever? walked into a place and, and, and feel somebody walk in and you could see them without them saying a word. It's just that you feel their energy, you feel their presence. You have that kind of space. You make space for whatever is needed. It is no different than uh, someone asking a question that you have no idea what they're going to ask, but you have created the space, not only for the question, but the answer. And even if the answer is, I don't know, let me ask Audrey, let me ask Barbara, let me ask Kathy, let me ask Pastor. It doesn't matter because if they have the answer, I know the answer. So this this discernment that that you have or this feeling, this this energy that comes about is because you are recognizing, you're becoming comfortable with being uh, complete, with being whole. This is not something that is new. It's not something that you're fighting. It's not something that you're questioning every minute of the day. You recognize it as a part of you and you recognize it and, and you have become one with it. Now, any questions about that? Okay. Uh, the the this thirty nine verse uh, again. Uh, it said outside the cup, you, you wash the outside of the cup in the platter, but inside of you, you are full of robbery and wickedness. That robbery should have been all uh, should not have been translated robbery. It should have been a thief or, or thievery. Robbery. Uh, doesn't apply there because robbery is talking about uh, I violently take something by force. This is talking about uh, when when you look at this 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 word, especially the word wickedness. It is talking about someone who sets a snare, someone who sets a trap, someone who does something uh, with deception. So that is 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 a uh, uh, what what wickedness is. But I want to back up a little bit here because he said Jesus says something here he says outside of the cup and the platter in the large scheme of things in the earth uh, as we have learned there is a lot more things more important than your body but if you cannot see past religion and religious practices that's as far as you get. And what he's saying here is the most important thing to you is not only uh, 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 what enters your body, you're not concerned with what comes out of the body, you're more concerned with what comes in, goes into the body, but you're also more concerned with appearances. You, you, you're, you're concerned with uh, 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 doing what is do these religious rites that other people can see what you're doing and uh, you gaining status from that. So it, it, it has nothing to do with you trying to be righteous. It has nothing to do with you uh, trying to show other people how to see who the creator is. It has everything to do 
with you being religious, being religious and being concerned with your status in life. So, uh, but from the inside of you, you're full of thievery and wickedness. So when you look, when you break this, this, this down, there was a, uh, the, I'm looking at something here, wickedness, the, 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 the word that I found in Hebrew, it talked it talk about one who does not have balance, one who struggles to find balance. And, uh, and, and it also means to break something or destroy something. Uh, and it, it is spelled uh, resh, shin, ayin. And resh uh, points to pride. Shin uh, point, shows you, points to jealousy. And ayin shows you greed. And uh, it, it, it has that word has a numerical value of 600 as does uh, uh the, the thievery so uh and and, and that word uh, uh means to, to to uh set a snap set a snare or a trap for the other part of, of wickedness that i found that i thought was very interesting uh it, it, it said not only to to be out of balance or uh, to to uh to be dysfunctional as opposed to being functional, but being this far. That's the part that I thought was interesting. It says to break or destroy something or, or something to be uh, uh, dysfunctional. And what it pointed to is, uh, let's say you have a bowl on your table and you bought this bowl because of the size of it, the depth of it, and you are a cake baker and you bake cakes with this bowl and you leave this bowl sitting on the table. So someone comes along and drops this bowl and breaks it. And you say, that is wicked. The wicked part of that is the bowl can no longer be used for its intent. The bowl was intended to bake cakes, but it can no longer be used for that. It is broken. It is, it is, it is, uh, this made it dysfunctional. So if you, uh, are not taking stock of who you truly are. And, and as Kathy put it yesterday, living from the inside out, if we're not looking at looking for the light, if we're not looking to, to calm those voices inside of us when we get irate sometime or, or we get frustrated and have those kind of days, if we're not uh, constantly, even in our meditation, being concerned with our breathing and, and, and what is going on. If we're not being prayerful, if, if, if you're not uh, uh, taking inventory and stock, even as Kathy talked about the hurt and the pain that you see and feel from others, all of that is part of taking inventory of the inside of you. When you, when you do that, you are using uh, you, you are being used for what God intended the human to be used for. There is a purpose. There is an intent, intent for being human, for us being in the earth. And if we use this body, if we use these spirits, if we use or, or misuse our spirits for any other purpose, we're being wicked. We're being dysfunctional. We're being out of balance. So that is is uh, kind of stuck out to me when I saw that verse because it, it all kind of pulls it all together and uh, makes sense to me. So in, in, any questions or, or comments on any of this? Okay. Uh, the the other part of that, I think we talked about it yesterday. Uh, the, the 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 uh the Pharisees, where they came from, and uh, the history of the Pharisees and who they are today, who they are today. Uh, after the destruction of the temple, they started calling themselves rabbis uh, because there was no central temple. There were actually synagogues stationed in each uh, town or village, if you will, 
and there was a need of a priest or or a rabbi in each of these locations. So uh, the history of that too, I, I find a bit intriguing. Is there anything else you guys see in these these scriptures? Okay then. Well, uh, that's about all I had tonight. If there's uh, unless you guys have questions. And again, if uh, if you guys want to, or if you haven't talked to Pastor or drop him a line, I, I don't think he would have mind me sharing that. Uh, I talked to him earlier today, uh, but I forgot. I meant to ask him would he mind me saying something, and I didn't. I forgot about it. We got to talking about some so much stuff. I forgot about it, but uh, I don't think he would mind me sharing that. But uh, drop him a line or a text or something, and. And if there are no other questions, uh, you guys have a good night. Okay, Ron, thank you. I do have a oh, go ahead. Yes, I do ma'am. have a question. I want I'm 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 taking some self inventory, so I want to make sure I understand this. <clears throat> so as we're going through each moment of every day, and there's moments when we um let our emotions get the better part of us. That's when we're, I don't know if the word is struggle or we're allowing darkness in or the darkness to rule in that particular moment. Is that yeah, how I, I should be looking at it? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't see it that way. I, I like, I like, uh, okay. And you hear me say this a lot. Uh, I, I like that, that thing Nick wrote on the board some time ago, set your intent and, and, and right. live. He didn't okay. put it like that, but just live. I mean, I, I think the struggle to a point is healthy. I think dwelling on it and staying and wallowing in it is what is unhealthy. But I think the struggle is what helps keep us focused sometimes. And 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 let, let's face it. I mean, there are days then uh, that, that that we do go through some things. There there are things that and and as we said before, I also do not believe that every piece of fear and everything that you feel that frustrates you or angers you, I don't always think belongs to you. I think the Creator allows us to receive it because it may destroy someone else. Okay. So, so every, every every little thing that we feel, I, I don't, I, I've I've learned not to beat myself up about because that's not what the journey is about, and that makes I don't think you can live like that. I don't think that's healthy. Okay. So I I set my intent that that you know what I'm going to be loving kindness. I'm not going to all uh, uh, hopefully have a great day. Uh, and 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 let it be at that. And one of the things that that I I really concentrate on probably more than anything is try to watch how I treat people. You know, even if I'm in a bad mood, I, I want to watch how I treat people. That to me is extremely important. So, but the rest of it, sometimes you ever get in the mood sometimes like, wow, where did that come from? Why do I feel like that? I don't think it's always mine. It's like, okay, what do I do with this now? What do what, what I supposed to do? And if you can't think it, just breathe. Just take a deep breath. Okay. Just take a deep breath. Yeah. But I don't think it's meant for us to uh, every moment of every day to be in a pleasant place and, and uh, not feel some type of turmoil or some type of uh, anxiety. I, I don't think that's possible. Anyone else, anybody else have a, an opinion or a take on that? Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for the question. A any other questions? Well, guys, uh, if you, uh, once again, if you do have something, jot it down and we'll lead off with it Saturday. But uh, if that's it, then thank you for your attention this evening. We look forward to seeing you next week. It was good, Ron. Thank you, Ron, for the teacher. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night.